For today's story, we are covering a argument that's currently being held by an appellate court as to whether or not trans athletes being able to participate in sports discriminates against their cisgendered classmates. So Title IX prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex. And so there, but it does of course recognize that sex exists because otherwise you couldn't discriminate on the basis of it. And so there is an argument that be had and being had about whether or not allowing trans athletes to participate could be a violation of Title IX, which is an interesting interpretation of Title IX to be sure. Let's get further into this. On Thursday, a federal appellate court heard arguments concerning the rights of transgender student athletes. But unlike most legal challenges, the plants aren't trans. So yes, these kinds of lawsuits have been filed, but typically they're being filed by the trans people to want to compete. And now they're being filed by the straight people or the cis people rather to not compete. So this group of young cisgendered women representing the Christian conservative legal organization Alliance Defining, Defending Freedom is arguing that allowing the trans athletes to compete on teams that align with gender identity violates the rights of cis women because non-women are competing and thus destroys what Title IX essentially created, right? Title IX was essentially created, well, and what it was used for, at least in large part, was the foundation of women's sports because it required essentially equal funding for men's sports and women's sports. And then women's sports increased something like nine times over as a result of Title IX. It was a huge deal. And they're saying, well, allowing men to compete on the women's teams is undoing that because women's no lo women no longer have teams for themselves. So the case was dismissed by a federal district judge, but has proven to be consequential. The lawsuit is cited by those who want to ban trans women and girls from competing in women's sports with several of the plants advocating for states to pass more restrictions. Advocates on both sides say the case has been instrumental in the public narrative. The plaintiffs in this case are four young cis women from Connecticut who competed in track and field during high school. They are challenging Connecticut's law or policy allowing trans high school athletes to compete in sex segregated sports that align with gender identity. They are, they are taking away our ability to compete because men just when they compete against women in these kinds of sports, just utterly dominate. And so it's not fair. This policy, the suit claims, puts women at a competitive disadvantage, so much so it violates their Title IX rights, which require schools to provide equal opportunity for members of both sexes, which of course implies that there are exactly two sexes and also implies that they are distinct. In other words, they're arguing that the Title IX protection for cis girls are compromised by trans girls being allowed to compete. Competing against trans girls, the complaint said, left the plants with materially fewer opportunities to stand on the victory podium, fewer opportunities to participate in postseason elite competition, fewer opportunities for public recognition as champions, and a much smaller chance of setting recognized records. This cause, caused irreparable harm to the students, the, the lawsuit argues, citing a 2019 race in which the plaintiff compared, competed against two trans girls. In that competition, the girl placed third behind the trans girls. If it weren't for the policy, they would have been placed first, been named the state open champion, and be publicly recognized for the accomplishment, which would have influenced college prospects. So this has produced some demonstrable and arguably monetary harm. It's really difficult to quantify how the girls' recruiting has been impacted in the long haul, but we do know is that any loss in an unfair race is wrong. The complaint therefore asks the courts to block all transgender girls from competing in women's sports. The plaintiffs also want the records amended to reflect what the results would have been had it not been for the improper, at least they argue, participation of the trans girls. A U.S. district judge had dismissed the lawsuit on procedural grounds, ruling that it was moot. At the time, two of the plants graduated from high school, and they found there's no indication they will enter a competition by transgender students. So saying it's moot because they had graduated. But, of course, typically that's not necessarily a problem because this is one of those things that's capable of review. The district court also noted that courts across the country have consistently held Title IX requires schools to treat transgender students consistently with their proclaimed gender identity. The lawsuit has been appealed to the Second Circuit, 
At the hearing, the attorneys have argued their clients were still affected by having to race against trans athletes, which render their competitive records inaccurate. The complaint should be sent back to the district court. A primary purpose of competitive athletics is to strive to be the best and, yes, to be recognized. Trophy, trophy shelves exist in high schools because we all recognize the past and the history of records matter. On the basis of legal precedent, it has been suggested that the defendants will win. In the Second Circuit, I think that's probably pretty likely. This isn't the Fifth Circuit. This is the Second Circuit. If this was the Fifth Circuit, I'd be feeling a lot better about it, but it's not. It's the Second Circuit, so yeah. The vast majority of precedent from federal courts recognize that Title IX protects transgender students from discrimination. In those rulings, transgender students were being forcibly excluded by schools. Here, they're not being excluded in any way. They're allowed to compete consistent with their gender identity. Yeah, but t Title IX doesn't protect gender identity. Title IX protects sex, not gender. It's right in the text. If this case is decided in favor of the defendants, it would affirm allowing transgenders to compete, at least for the moment. If the judge rules in favor of plaintiff, it would create a conflicting interpretation. I would expect the Second Circuit to maintain this. You know, you never, you never can know for sure. You could get surprised. But, yeah, I'd expect the Second Circuit to say that they're totally okay with this. The plaintiff's stories has been referred to by states looking to pass laws that would restrict trans girls competing in female sports. Sewell, who was the very first cis female athlete to speak out on the issue, has given testimony to a number of state legislatures, including Kansas and North Dakota, supporting the policies. I think it's been a start of the movement that's meant to restore fairness in the level playing field. But the case's influence doesn't necessarily stop at sports, according to the ACLU. The top of athletics is, in a lot of conversations, short of an entry point for driving away into broader arguments that girls who are transgender should not be treated as girls and that boys who are transgender should not be treated as boys. Y yeah, that would, yeah, that would be because we believe that, that people believe that sex actually exists and is real and can't necessarily be changed. So the battle over Title IX has gone to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals to review whether or not women can sue because men are competing as women. And the so far that the case has been dismissed. Now, I would expect the Second Circuit to say that, yes, men can compete as women if they say that they're women. And women is someone who says they're a woman, who says they're a woman, who says they're a woman. So, yes, all those things. So we'll see how that progresses. But I would imagine no matter what happens in this case, that's certainly not the end of it. These issues will continue, continue at least for a moment. That brings us to the end of the discussion of this case.